Hi there, Physically Debunked here, and today I feel like doing some debunking. While browsing YouTube, I found a video with an impressive 2 million views, which claimed to show how dice can prove the existence of God. Naturally, I was very sceptical, but I decided to give it a watch. Surely if 2 million people have watched this, it must contain something of interest. Let's find out. Some people say that human existence is a result of a roll of the cosmic dice. Okay, I think that's a terrible way of putting it. Saying that atheists believe that our existence is the result of a dice roll or random chance is a complete mischaracterization. Apologists wrongly equate coming into existence through natural processes with random chance, when in reality these two things couldn't be much more different. Now, what if I rolled this dice 70 times and every single time I got a six? Okay, that's pretty unlikely, but it's possible, right? Well, in fact, the chances of rolling a six 70 times in a row are around one in 10 to the 55. That's a one with 55 zeros after it. The math is looking fine at the moment. What if you applied that thinking to us? What are the odds of us being here? Now, the odds of rolling 76s in a row, one in 10 to the 55, as it happens, those are the same odds of something called the expansion rate of the universe being just right for the existence of us here today. I love how he says it just so happens without any references whatsoever. When you quote figures like this, it is much more convincing if you can point to a scientific paper or source from which you found this number. A quick search on the internet for the expansion rate of the universe being fine-tuned to one part in 10 to the 55 yields mostly a load of religious and apologetics websites which also just quote this number without reference. To be fair to this guy though, I think it is correct to say that the expansion rate of the universe is fine-tuned to one part in 10 to the 55, but apologists make it so difficult to verify their claims when they don't reference anything. Also, because so many facts that apologists quote turn out to be bogus, you end up doubting everything they say. Actually, while we're on the subject, how is this guy assigned odds to this anyway? Yes, the expansion rate may need to be correct to 55 decimal points, but there's no way you can just turn this into a probability. If I wanted to calculate the probability of getting a six on a dice, I take one and divide it by the number of possibilities, six. But for the expansion rate of the universe, I don't have 10 to the 55 different universes I can observe and see that one of them has the correct expansion rate. We don't even know whether the expansion rate could have been different. We have no idea what values the expansion rate could have taken or how likely each possibility is. Yes, it's true that the range of values that the expansion rate can take and produce life is very small. But until you know what the possibilities and their probabilities are, there is no way you can equate small range with small probability. But as it happens, the universe expanded at just the right rate to allow for life to develop in the future, for us to be here. It hit 70 rolls of the number six in a row, first time. How do you have any idea that this was the first roll of the dice? Perhaps there hasn't been just one roll of the cosmic dice. Maybe there are other universes. Maybe our current universe is just one epoch in a much longer cosmic history. Or perhaps the absurdly low probability you've assigned to the observed expansion rate is completely wrong. And the expansion rate of the universe is just one among 30 or so other incredibly sensitively finely tuned constants and fundamental forces in the universe that must be just the way they are for the universe to be able to produce us. Yes, it is true that all these things appear finely tuned for life, but appear fine tuned is not the same thing as are fine tuned. Apparent fine tuning is real. There are constants within our physical theories which, had they taken ever so slightly different values from what they are, life as we know it would not exist. That the universe appears fine tuned is a scientific fact, but that doesn't mean that it actually is fine tuned. We have no idea if the values of the constants could have been different, and no idea whether certain values are more likely than other values. Apparent fine tuning is good evidence that we need to look for deeper explanations of why the constants take the values they do, but there's simply no need to invoke the existence of an intelligent designer. Doing so is simply a god of the gaps argument. Now let me ask you, why would we assume that this universe with us in it, which is actually way more improbable than my 70 rolls, is just a result of chance. 
Once again, nobody, or at least very few people, are saying that the universe and all of its properties are the result of pure chance. What atheists deny is only that a supernatural creator is behind the universe's existence. This doesn't mean that the only other way we could have come about is by chance. There's no reason to think that we won't find a natural explanation for why the constants take the values they do. And despite what apologists try to assert, natural explanation is not the same thing as random chance. The fact that we're here shows that someone's loaded the dice. In fact, maybe there's no dice at all. What if the evidence points to this life-permitting universe actually being the product of an intelligent mind which intended for us to be here? Is God a possible solution? Yes. Does the evidence point to God being the best answer to fine-tuning? No. Now you could come up with some speculative other theory. Maybe there's an infinite number of universes giving you an infinite number of chances to roll the dice. Maybe. But we don't have any scientific evidence for it. Now, while it's true to say that there isn't convincing evidence for any particular model of a multiverse, there's a wide variety of them that are being developed actively by distinguished cosmologists. The amount of attention currently being devoted to multiverse models is indicative of how many cosmologists think the existence of a multiverse is worth investigating. We may not have conclusive evidence for any particular multiverse model, but we also don't have evidence that the constants can be tuned at all, and there's also no evidence to suggest that the existence of an intelligent mind is the best explanation for the apparent fine-tuning. So if you're hanging your hat on that possibility, then you're every bit as much committed to a faith position as the person who says God was behind it. It's wrong to think that fine-tuning is an established scientific fact. The appearance of fine-tuning is, but there's no more evidence that the universe is actually fine-tuned than there is for multiverses. Believing in God isn't a delusion. Believing in God based on this argument is, though. It's a perfectly reasonable conclusion when we look at the fingerprints on our universe. Being a believer can make you very susceptible to observation bias. You see God in things because that's what you are looking to find. If you do look at science as a theist, I think it's quite easy to find facts that on the surface look like they support the existence of a creator. If you went into science without any theistic preconceptions, however, I don't think you'd be led to the idea of an omnipotent, benevolent creator at all. Based on the laws of physics we know, the universe does appear to be fine-tuned for our existence. An omnipotent god, however, would not be bound by any particular laws of physics, so why not create a universe which actually looks designed for us, instead of one in which we're located in a tiny, dark corner of a vast, mostly inhospitable cosmos? I find it very unbelievable looking out into the universe that people would think, yeah, that's made for us. To sum up, the main fallacy of this fine-tuning-esque argument is that it claims we know the universe is fine-tuned in a way that could only be naturally explained as a result of chance. The claim is that because there's such a small margin of error for various constants, this translates into a small probability for a universe with the right conditions for life. This is, however, a gross extrapolation. We don't know whether the conditions of this universe are improbable. We don't even know if there's anything to tune. Of course, it might be the case that there are some free parameters that have to take very precise values for us to exist, but even then we could naturally explain their values in terms of the existence of multiple other universes. In any case, the fine-tuning argument doesn't favour the existence of a god over any other natural explanation. Why these constants take the value they do is an intriguing mystery in modern cosmology, and I think the answer to this mystery will be much more interesting than God did it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more physics, philosophy, atheism and stuff. A quick search on the internet for the expansion rate of the universe being fine-tuned to one in ten to the fifty to the fifty to the fifty-five.